what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat. So we are, um, you know, tomorrow, I mean tomorrow, next week we start a sermon series. Everybody say truth. Truth. This is what the sermon series is going to be about, truth. Today we're going to talk about vision. It's Vision Sunday. So vision for 2024, we're going to talk about get wrapped and the vision. But I also wanted to, I always uh, attempt to put something on how we got the vision, but also which it relates to each and of one of us personally, because I think a lot of times we take the word of God and we, we actually interpret it through selfish ways. Amen. So today we're going to start off with Hosea 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Um, and I'm starting there, and I believe that this is a prophetic word, right? When, you know, when we talk about revelation, it's a prophetic word. It's a, a word that comes from the word of God that actually shows you the, the coming attractions, right? The future. Um, but I, I want to, I, I felt like when I was praying, the Lord was like, you're going to start off with Hosea 4, 1. You're going to explain that as you get into the text, because I want you to see where I feel God is saying we are. And I believe that this is super important because um, I believe 2024 is going to be an incredible year followed by a year or, or years that look worse than the other years that we thought were bad. And some of you might be saying, you know, because you'll get excited about 2024 and how the interest rates will go down and all that stuff. It's great, right? You never knew COVID was coming. You never thought September 11th. I, I believe, you know, because I've, I've said this before. I knew who was going to win the last presidential election. I just kind of knew. I knew. Even though it's not who I wanted to win, I knew who was going to win. Because if I was God, I'd turn up the fire so people can jump out the pan. It's the only way to know what's, you know, what's born in the fire, right? You turn it up. And if you stay in the fire, then you are pretty much saved. And if you jump out and run a different direction, then maybe you weren't saved to start with. Amen? Amen. Hosea 4, 1. I'm going to read this. Y'all all know verse 6. It's the one everybody knows. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And it's the story of Homer and all that. But I'm going to read you here this chapter and this verse because I believe we need to understand Everybody say vision. vision. Okay. So it says, hear the word of the Lord. Now, th this is awesome because that word hear is there again. And I believe throughout Scripture, God always has a problem with his people on them hearing, even though everybody got ears. Amen. We have any parents here? Yes. Sometimes the kids don't want to listen. And you tell them something and you're like, man, I mean, you're not listening? Okay, that's how God feels about us adults. Look at some of the young ones are like, amen. <laughs> Mom. No, I'm joking. It says, hear the word of the Lord. Now, hear and Lord are probably two very important words and the word word. People of Israel or people of get wrapped, people of America, people in the world. For the Lord has a case against the inhabitants of the land. Now, this sounds to me like, you know, maybe I got extra excited because it sounded like a case. Because the Lord had a case, so he's the prosecutor. He is prosecuting his people because the people of the land, he says, there's no truth, no faithful love, and no knowledge of God in the land. What winds up happening in this text, just to paint you a picture, is that these people had no truth, no faithful love, and no knowledge of the land, of God in the land. So these are God's people who had no knowledge of God. These are God's people who had no faithful love. In other words, they were good with lip service, but their heart wasn't really in it because they had no deeds. They just said things with their mouth. And there was no truth. Now, truth is the absolute objective. I like saying objective because I feel like we need an object to point to, which would be the person of Jesus Christ. So it's the absolute objective of which reality is measured by. So it's not, you think it's true, it's true, you could disagree on a whole bunch of stuff. But truth is the absolute objective. Jesus is truth. But he says, I'm the truth. 
So truth is the absolute objective, absolute objective on which reality is measured. It's not based on your experiences or opinion. It does not change. So what was happening here is that these people had none of that. Yet they were God's people. Isn't that interesting? And because of that, the land got sick. And his major problem was with the priest and the prophet, the pastors and the leaders. Now today, we're, we have an identity as a, if you remember the beginning of the year, I said we're all kingdom priests, especially the men. Where are my men at? Wow. We're really going to conquer there. Where are my men at? Well, we might win something. Right there. We might. And so what's happening is that everything gets messed up, and he's upset with the leaders, the, the pastors, and the, or the priests, and the prophets because they weren't leading by example. They were actually leading people in the wrong direction. They were, they were in prostitution. They were involved with women and doing all of these things. And so they had messed up everything. The land was messed up. The country was messed up. You know, this is what America looks like today. Everything seems to be messed up, and we keep blaming everything on everybody but us, the people of God. And so then they destroyed themselves for lack of knowledge. It doesn't matter what anyone says, if God, even if God says it, if you don't believe it, seems to always be the problem. You say you believe. They said they believe. That's why he's like, there's no truth, no faithful love, and no knowledge of God in the land. Mark 4.20. We just came out of a sermon series, and I wanted to give you this because I thought it was, I don't know, I felt like the Lord took me there. And those are the ones whose seed was sown on good soil. That's a good heart of humility, receptive, good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruits. 30, I mean 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, interesting enough, it says they hear the word and accept it. It doesn't say they hear the word, accept it, and obey. Because the, it's not, the assumption here is that if you heard the word and you accepted it, you'll do it. In other words, if I had $10 and I was going to give you the $10 bill, if you accept the $10 bill, eventually you'll spend it. Because you accepted it. But if you never accepted it, you'll never have it. So it's not like, because look, a person could be in works and have no relationship with God and look like he's obedient. The question is always, is he reproducing fruit? You can tell me with your lips all day where you're at, and I can tell you by your fruit all day where you're at. Especially uh, people that came out from the street. Man, you, get a, you got a mouthpiece. That's what I'm usually trying to, like, stop. I'm like, yeah, like, I, I see you. You call yourself an apple, but there's oranges everywhere. It's amazing. All we have to do is hear the word and accept it. Isn't that interesting? Look at how simple. Hear the word. Accept that what he's saying is true over what you think is true. Over your experience. Over your opinion. Accept that. And then you bear fruit. That don't sound complicated. What must be complicated is that we have ears but we don't listen. Jesus talked about a heart condition even with his disciples. He said that they had, remember, he, he had did the miracle with the bread, and then they, they were going to do the miracle again, and they were confused as if the miracle wasn't going to happen. And he says, he says that their heart condition, that they were people who had, uh, couldn't see, that these people could not see, they did not understand, and they did not remember. In other words, they did not hear. So he's telling them, if I showed you this, why can you still not see and understand? When he speaks to you his word, don't you remember that if he said it, he'll do it. It's amazing how when we go to Proverbs 29, 18, he says, without revelation, people run wild. And he's not talking about like, yeah. You know, he's not talking about wild like that. Without revelation, people run wild, but one, but one who follows divine instruction will be happy. I'm going to give it to you in a couple different translations because I need you to leave here understanding this so that you could actually see. Everybody say, I want to see. I want to see. Okay.
Okay, well, I'm going to show you how. I'm glad you want to see it. <laughs> um, the message translation, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Look at this one, Jacob. If a nation is not guided by God, the people will lose self-control. But the nation that obeys God's law will be happy. The NLT says it like this. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. Interesting enough, we have all these scriptures, even Habakkuk. You know, we take scriptures like that and said, write the vision down, make it plain. And people go and they make these vision things. And, 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 and I have nothing against understanding the principle of that. But what I have against is when things are not done exactly how God is saying it. And in Habakkuk, let me tell you, the vision was never about you and your business and this and that. It just wasn't. I'm sorry. Newsflash. Let's look at the Habakkuk in context a little bit. They, these people, I'm going to paraphrase so you understand it. They're fighting. God's going to give Habakkuk instruction. He said, hey, write that down. Write the vision. Write what I'm saying to you so that when you run, you can do it. And when people can see a witness, and nobody can take the credit but me. That's what he's saying. That's what he's actually saying. Write it down. Write the revelation that I'm giving you. I'm talking to you. If it is business, he's talking to you business but kingdom. If it is, whatever it is, relationships, parenting, whatever it is, write that down so that you can see it running, but so that you can be a witness to the rest of the world of what God said to you. When we read the word, when we get transformed in the renewing of our mind, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. It's, it's actually us showing the world that we are not smart enough, but God has wisdom. And when we apply that wisdom by knowing him, it's the gospel. Amen. That everybody would know that it came from him. Without the revealed wisdom of God's word, people run into walls. They're blind. Truth is the absolute standard, the absolute objective standard. Jesus is the object. Jesus is the object to which the standard, he's the word. To which reality is measured no matter how we feel about it. It doesn't matter about your opinion. It doesn't matter how you feel. They run wild. That means they do whatever comes to mind. Whatever hope, whatever they hope, whatever they choose to hope in, whatever they desire, whatever longing strikes them, whatever they desire, you just do whatever they want to do. That's what it means people run wild. Without God's word, people run wild. How many people you think are not reading their Bible and living it out according to what you see America today? When you're complaining, you might be part of the problem. Because we need people who are going, man, I'm going to be, I, I, I'm learning what a man is, I'm learning what a woman is, I'm learning what marriage is, I'm learning how parenting is, or just the simplicity of life. I am learning that so I could reproduce that, so my kids generationally could, that's what this was all about. Oh, you thought it was about you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, none of this is about us. Now, God is so cool because he's like, I'm going to bless you while you're doing it. That's the part that we struggle with. Is he? I know what I could do, right? Will he? Because he's got it behind his back. He's like, you want me to show you? Do this first. And you're like, oh, man, I need you to show me, and then I'll do it. But that's not how God works. Until your revelation, uh, this is a shameful book plug, but in August, you know, I'm launching a book, and it's called Prison Break. And this is one of the things in that book. Until your revelation becomes greater than your environment, you will always live a life of imprisonment. Until your revelation becomes greater than what you think. Until God's revealed plan becomes greater than what you think until his word on what he thinks about a matter becomes greater than what you think about a matter you will always be in prison what jesus that's why you look transformed and different you ain't gonna look this you I, 
Think about it. What if I was still outside? <coughs> People just like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, what's up? And I cuss and stuff. You're right? You'd be like, well, I mean, some of y'all might be cool. You might be like, hey, pastor. <laughs> but the goal is that somebody looks so different that you don't recognize them no more. You don't recognize them no more. They're like, bro, why? You love your wife? What the hell? <laughs> you were never like that. Why? You care about your kids? Why? You're a giver? <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be like. It, a vision is a picture of God's preferred future for your life in every area. It's a sneak peek of a coming attraction. We've been praying about some things this year. Hopefully, you've been putting this into your prayer life. Why? We talked about prayer. I wanted to go, why? I don't know why. It just felt good. That was the countryside, why? When we talked about prayer, we said that our Father who are in heaven, so recognizing who he is, honoring his name, just not coming, in, coming up to him like he's anybody, with a little respect and reverence, and that we would pray his kingdom come. That means his kingdom. That means this word has final authority. It governs. It rules. It calls the shots in your soul. And so because of that, his will shall be done. We make everything about us. But that's not what we're doing at Get Rap. We're going to be praying and fasting throughout the year. We're actually going to have prayer nights and fasting throughout the year. Why? To help you develop that life. And we would pray this year. You would be praying about a lot of things, but this is what we're praying corporately, that God would bless Israel. Why? Because those are his people. That God would bless America. That God would bless the economy. Right? Because just because the planet's going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs doesn't mean that his people will. And that we would also pray for the election. We don't wait till the day of the election. We start praying now. We're asked to pray for families. Right? And when you pray, remember, when you pray, there's an active thing you do, right? Because I think a lot of times we do the, God, do this. <laughs> and I hope he does it. <laughs> oh, that's not what this is. When you pray, there's an, right? So if we're praying for the election, that means you have to vote. What if we lose by one vote? It means everybody has to vote according to the Bible. Not according to, oh, we think that's Hispanic culture. No, no, we vote according to the Bible. <laughs> then we're praying for families, that our families, that God would bless our families, that we would strengthen our families. Come on. That we would get strengthened, that the marriages would be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, that sometimes we got to pray generationally. Come on, that's why we're doing all the things we're doing at Get Rap. We're being intentional at doing some of these things. Right, we're praying for strong families. That means we're going to have uh, things that here I'm about to tell you. All these things I'm about to tell you that Get Rap is doing is according to these things. That's the actual thing. We're praying for divine health. When I pray generationally, wait, wait, wait. Let me, uh, when I pray generationally i'm praying for my daughters and my kids i'm praying for their kids kids or their kids 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 their kids 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 i don't know when he's coming back if he comes back next year fine with kids kids <laughs> but if he comes back five years from now i'm making sure that i am covering them in prayer that that would be men and women of god come on and and what does that mean that means that i gotta live a life because if i'm praying for that that means that i'm doing that you get how that works because we like to pray and like not do nothing and then god shows up and he's like i got you he already did everything. Amen. We're praying for divine health. Come on. Long life. Why? So we can build a kingdom. Come on. I got to still be able to move. <laughs> You're going to get a kick out of this one. So I was like, man, I was struggling because I was praying last year. Lord, I want to work out. And so I kept feeling, I kept feeling like I was failing. I was failing. You could fail a little bit. But I was like, he said, Juan, you've done that a million times. I said, Juan, he said, everything, every time you got locked up, you kicked on to a routine. And I was like, well, that's true. He said, instantly you had a routine and you instantly worked out for years. 
I was like, all I got to do is the same thing. So, you know, I started with my push-ups. I started doing push-ups every day. I already know how that works. Before you know it, I'm not, you know, now I have a fuller bar, but before, you know, it would have been two towels, you know, under the steps. But <laughs> so now I, I, I put a puller bar, start doing that, and eventually I'll get to the weights, right? I've done it a million times. So now I'm not just praying for divine health. I'm actually doing something about this divine health that I'm praying about. We're going to be praying for, uh, believe God, for the abundance of work here at the church. Listen, we want, we want pastors. We, we want to have tons of employees so we can do more work. We want, we're praying for miracle money. That's crazy. No, that's God money. Why? To build the kingdom. There's a lot of things we want to do. We want God to finance everything he's called us to do. Everything he's called us to do. This is how we're going to do it. Us. I'm excited. I'm excited about this. On Resurrection Sunday, everybody say on Resurrection Sunday. Some of y'all know that Sunday as Easter Sunday, we're picking up a miracle offering. We're slowing down some of the things that we're doing. We have business owners helping us with kind of like uh, loading some of our stuff and keeping some of our uh, items so that we could actually give a lot of these items away throughout the year and do all these things, which I'll mention here in a minute. But we're trying to raise this money so we can get land. So we can move to the next thing that God has for us. So we can build what God has for us. So start praying about what that number is for you. Go to the Lord. If you're in the building, I don't know, maybe you got a million dollars. Then let's handle up. <laughs> Y'all are laughing. I'm dead serious. Like, I, I want to build something, you know, especially when usually with the, the anomalies, right? They're like, oh, you'll never build there. You better move to Sugarland or Katy. I'm like, so you're saying that it's dependent. And I get it. I get it in the natural. Come on, man. If that was the case, I definitely shouldn't have been Dr. Martinez. That was supernatural. God can do it. We'd be a beacon of light. The whole planet will be like, what? How they they do that? There. I'm like, ha, <laughs> ha. The last one is uh, to pray for the people to be free. We got that out of Isaiah, to break the chains of wickedness, untie the ropes of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, and to tear off every yoke. This place, Get Wrapped Church, everybody say, Wrapped in the Love of Christ. Wrapped in the Love of Christ. That's actually where that came from. That's the first thing I wrote in the Bible when I was in prison years ago. Don't run if it's your first time. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> but I wrote down, Wrapped in the Love of Christ. And then God gave me Get Wrapped, which turns the conversation into me telling somebody how to get wrapped in the love of Christ. The scripture that we read every Sunday, even in the beginning, listen, it didn't matter what we preached, we read this verse. This is the verse we were standing on. You ready? Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. And that Christ may dwell in your hearts. In other words, may he make himself at home in your heart through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints. You need all the saints to comprehend this, just in case you thought you could do it alone. What is the length and width and height and depth of God's love? And to know Christ's love that surpasses human knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Why do we do what we do? Our purpose is to help people develop an intimate relationship with God. Come on, that we could help people, right? Disciples who disciple, that people will learn, grow, and mature. The key words there are develop, right? To help someone mature towards Christ. That we would help develop people. That they would have an, their own intimate relationship. I want you to hear me preach and go, yes, that's in the word. Amen. Remember, amen was truth. Is this, we live in a society where everybody amens everybody. Amen, 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 amen. That's not, amen, when you go amen, that means truth. That's what that means when you go amen. Truth. I, I think I had a sermon series where I told, told you a little bit about this amen, and Jesus put it in the front. Like he didn't need, <laughs> it's true. He says, truly, truly, I tell you, right, all the time. That means amen, amen, truth, truth, I tell you. So whether you amen him or not, truth, truth, I tell you. And that's the beauty of when Jesus speaks. We want to help people develop an intimate relationship with God. What we as a church hope to create, our vision. Come on. From God's word, our vision. To love, to hang out, to lead. That means, I'm going to give you scriptures for this. Verses. 
so you guys can see. Ooh, I just heard in the soul, I can see clearly now. The word will shine. Mm -mm, mm. Now, hold up. Now, come back. <laughs> you almost kept me going. Almost. <laughs> love God, love people. To love. Love God, love people. I'm going to read you John 13, 34, and 35. But before I read that, I want, I want to show you something. If you remember Deuteronomy 6, he tells us that. To love, to love God with all the heart, soul, and strength. This is what God says to us. Now, the amazing part is that there's a scripture that everybody kind of goes to, and we've created all kinds of boundaries and books on it that are totally a lie and wrong. And this is that. He was talking to the Pharisees. Do you remember? He said, what are the two greatest commandments? Because they were trying to, like, throw them under the bus. And he says, to love God with all your right. He gave them an Old Testament scripture. He gave them Deuteronomy 6 because they would understand that. And then Jesus, being as cold as he was, in a good way, cold, I mean cool, he says to them, hey, love others as you love yourselves. And so this is where we get the, oh, I got to really love me. It's all about me. That's a selfish thing. He wasn't telling them that. As, he was telling them that as a this. He was like, yo, you know how you love yourself? You know how you're full of yourself? You know like everything's about you, yet you talk about God? Okay, love people the way you love you, you selfish human. But look at what he tells us. Now, this is Jesus' command. So, so don't get it twisted because we, we love to run. Well, I got to love me first. And, it, and let me tell you something. If you receive God's love and you love him, he's going to take care of you first anyway. Okay. But if you go off of that scripture, then you'll be selfish. I'm telling you, you'll be full of yourself. It's kind of what happens. But look at John 13, 34, 35. I give you a new command. What? Love one another just as I have loved you. So that means you have the... the, the, the the way to love someone else is to have received Jesus' love for you. When you receive Jesus' love for you, then you can love someone else. If you haven't received that love, it's going to be real hard to do that in your own strength. As a matter of fact, you can't do it. You are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. <coughs> if you love <coughs> one another. Hang out with God, hang out with people. To love, to hang out, to lead. Right? We're hanging out with God, we're hanging out. To abide in Him means to hang out if you really want to know because I know we take that word and we made it real worldly and everybody no we we hang out whether you like it or not whether you're doing it the right way or the wrong way to abide in God is to hang out in God to let him dwell in your hearts for you to always be with him so you hang out with God and so therefore you'll hang out with people look at Hebrews 10 25 I'm going to read 24 because it goes with 25 and let us consider one another in order to provoke love what? So you're provoking love and good works. So let us consider one another. This is why you should get good at the one another's. There's a whole bunch of one another's. Look them up. Uh, encourage one another. Love one another. Forgive one another. There's all these one another's in the Bible. It says, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believing as in the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. This is good, y'all. Why do I got to join in? Why do they want to hang out? Well, because you're supposed to be in community. What? Hey, because here's the thing. Because this is the latest. Well, you know, I'm just going through things right now. So, like, I can't, like, you know, go to a hangout or, you know, whatever your excuse is. Okay, there's what your opinion and then there's the truth absolute objective standard by which reality is measured so you put your thing and then you put it next to this this is how you do this guys and then you say what's truth yours isn't and the reason you do that let me tell you because the enemy would want you to well i gotta go over here and then he starts talking to you and then you start thinking, they said this, they're thinking that, they're all this crazy stuff. But when you go around God's people, I've never seen somebody chop a finger and run away from the hospital. That would be weird, right? He's like bleeding everywhere. You're like, the hospital's that way. He's like, I got to go fix this. <laughs> That's not what would happen. You're actually supposed to come around God's people in your most difficult moments so they could lift you up. 
so they could encourage you, so they could give you truth because you can't see in your fog. I'm telling you, I mean, listen, you could email me whatever your opinion is. I'm, I'm just giving you this verse. You, you email God. I mean, just, just put, this is truth. This is truth right here. This is truth. Now, if you accept that truth, you will reproduce 30, 60, 100 fold. That's the whole, that's how we started this thing. And if you're not doing that, maybe your life looks wild and all over the place. Because that's what Hosea said. Remember I said this is all going to tie. We're led by God so we could be, so we could lead people. In other words, sons and daughters, we're always led by the Spirit of God is what the Bible says. And you cannot lead someone somewhere that you have not been yourself. And people often do what they see instead of what they say. That's why Jesus had to warn us, the people that their lips were moving but their heart wasn't in it but knew the Bible. He said, listen, listen to what they have to say but don't do as they do. Because you'll wind up in the ditch because they're all blind. Everybody say amen. amen. Yeah, that's true. Now you just admitted it. Can't take it back, so no take backs. <laughs> you know, no fingers crossed behind the back, none of that, like you just said. Our mission, what we ask people to do. Come on, the mission, that was the vision. This Wednesday we have a lab. We're going to go a little more in detail. You need to be there. Why? Because you said in the beginning of the year, 2024 was going to be the best year of your life. Okay, let's get in that spiritual gym. Let's stop making excuses to why, oh, you're going to have the same life, do the same thing, wind up in the same spot. This is your time to grow as a person, come on, to make Christ known by the way we love everywhere we go, and that starts at home. John 13, 35, remember, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. How does that even look? loving the planet and not your home how does that even look think about it that's what well you don't understand she's difficult you're difficult <laughs> you don't understand he's difficult you're difficult you don't understand how hard the kids are do you think god's up there going mm, they're all difficult <laughs> <laughs> all of them so when you see someone reproducing fruit that just means that they've heard the word and accepted it. That's it. They're not like more special than anybody else. They just said, okay, I'm going to take this truth as my new truth. And it starts at home. Our promise to everyone, we're all about love. Woo! Everybody's like, oh, look. Some of the single dudes are like, what? <laughs> not that. That's not what we're talking about. And I need to make it clear because, you know, I see people out there, I hear, oh, you can't be all about love. Love ain't everything. That's because your definition of love is twisted. But we're all about love. Why? I'm going to show you the scripture right now. Well, after the, all the other ones I read. Faith, hope, and love, right? The greatest of these is love. Why? Because in heaven there will always be love. You won't need faith and hope. Okay. Just, just to make that clear. You know, what do you need faith for? He's right there. <laughs> the hope of glory. He's like standing right there. If you can't see him then. But check it out. When we say we're all about love, you see in there, we're all about Jesus. We're all about the cross. Everybody say this. We're all about, we're all about the, cross. the cross. That's why everything for us, we have the word love. But what that means is this. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to the disciples. Obviously, the disciples would understand this more than anybody else. Right? So he said to him, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take up his what? Cross. Come on, we're talking about take up his what? Cross. We're all about the crucified life. We are people. That's how you become a good heart. That's how you be everything that you're trying to become. If you seek your first the kingdom, he governs and rules and reigns your soul. He tells you this is what a father is. And you die to your ways. And live to his way, then everything changes. It's not as complicated as we make it, except that a lot of times our selfish 
selfishness kind of grows. There's a misconception that people, uh, uh, that people have about love. They, they think that it's always affirming everybody's behavior, even the sinful ones. That's not love. Let me give you a parenting one-on-one real quick. I'm just going to throw this one in there. I'm just going to... I'm just going to give you this one. Okay? Because, you know, I, I, I love moms, you know. You know, I tell Ruthie sometimes, you know, mommyism, baby, I get it. You know, because you guys love, you know, we're different. But this is truth. You can't have love without truth. Because you can't affirm someone's behavior in the name of love. That's sinful. If it's wrong, you can't be like, well, mijo, I'm just going to let you. You got you to give truth because that way they understand the consequences, right? If a person says, hey, you should wait to have a relationship for a year so you can figure out your own life before you try to ruin 15 others, then you do that. Man, that dude don't love me. No, he, he actually loves you enough to tell you the truth, and it's actually harder for him to tell you than it is for you to receive it because he feels weird too. He's like, oh man, I don't really want to say this, but I'm going to tell him anyway. Amen? Ooh, you amen me too. Good, good, good. <laughs> Pastor Ernesto, write that down. <laughs> it's not that complicated, y'all. That's why we come as a body. That's why there's different levels of maturity. That's what we do. That's what we have pastors, leaders. That's, that's why. Everybody understand? So biblical love doesn't disregard the feelings. We just don't move on feelings. Like we move on faith. We move on truth. And feelings follow. It's not feelings then truth. Because that will jack you up. We all been there. Well, they don't love me. They don't, you didn't even have a conversation with them. Like you don't even, dude, we, we just don't do that. Look at Timothy Keller. He says, love without truth is sentimentality. It supports and affirms, but keeps us in denial about our flaws. I'm going to read that again real slow, and, and I'll give it to you in the message and in the hood, just in case. <laughs> just in case. I, that's, the, that's the beauty. That's how God wired me, right? So let, let me give it to you. Look, this makes me feel smart when I read it like this. It says, love without truth is sentimentality, right? Like sen- sentimental. Oh. That was in three translations right there, if you caught it. It supports and affirms, but keeps us in denial about our flaws. I'm going to read that one more time. Love without truth is sentimentality. It supports and affirms, but keeps us in denial about our flaws. It keeps you thinking that everything you did was good. You start to think that your sinful life is great and you get offended every time somebody t- calls you out on something. But without it, it's just sentimental. Ew, that one's so good. First John 3.16. This is how, uh, 16, this is how we've come to know love. Oh! You can learn, you can know love? Oh, let, let me see what the Bible says. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has this world's goods and sees a fellow believer in need but withholds compassion from him, how does God's love reside in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in action and in truth. In action and in truth. So there has to be truth. There always has to be truth. Four-week sermon series starts next week. You, you need to bring the whole planet. Talk about what God is going to give up. Okay, we wanted to do hangouts. We went one year. I want to show you. Everything we're saying is because we want instant gratification. When we're doing something, even though it doesn't look like what, you know, because we get, oh, well, look at, they're doing all the cool stuff, and look at what they're doing, all the cool stuff. No, no, no. We're doing what this word says, and we're we're trying to grow disciples to strengthen what we believe God is bringing. That's how you prepare, Right? We just can't be like, oh, we just want to grow with numbers. We want to grow, grow, grow for what? We got five people that are saved. We need like some, and not just like earth inside. We wanted to do hangouts to bring the word. We, we, we planned for it. We rolled it out. Our goal was 
over our goal, I told them at least 80%. They're like, 80%? I said, yes, I want to start with 80%. They, we did 60% the first year. Let me tell you where we're at. 83.73% of adults. You know what that means? That means 80% of this church is not just the Sunday going person. They're actually connected and in community. I don't know. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, I just want to dance sometime. Generations department, coming soon. Children's sensory friendly services. Come on. I just see somebody in the back with the, you know, for, even for adults. Like, I, I think that would be dope. I'm just going to throw that out there. But anyway, this, let's get back to the truth. <laughs> I just saw it. I just saw it. Children's, they're doing about 100 kiddos a Sunday. And we're already running out of room. I think even in this service, we're running out of room. In the next service, we're running out of room. God is on the move. Okay, look. Listen to me. Tonight, the students launch. Tonight, the students launch. Let me tell you what that means. Let me tell you what that means. Where are my parents? I mean, y'all get excited. Y'all are like, Wee. All right, where are my parents at? Come on, we got to start making parenting, being a father, a man, a woman. We got to start making that thing cool. We got to make it like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, yeah, I'm a parent. We need your help. There's all these plans that we're doing, all these things. We need your help. We need you to come alongside some of the students' team. We need you to ask about your kids. Why are we creating spaces to do this? We're going to have parent-teacher meetings. Why? Just to teach. Maybe we didn't learn that. But it doesn't mean that we don't do that. Are you with me? I, I, and Pastor Nesta knows, like, like, I'm Latino. And I got tired of hearing, like, oh, Latinos are always late. So I'm usually the earliest one. Why? Because that's the only way I'm going to inject culture. And it works, y'all. Let me tell you, it works when you get there a little earlier. Look at all my Latinos. They're like, damn, we got to get there early, too? Come on, they have the version of their own hangouts. They're currently in schools. They're they, they, they doing some good stuff. Tonight they launch. Why? So you could go have a date night. Man, you could go to the movies for two hours. What? You're like, I don't know. <laughs> you get to go chill. Just drop them off. But think about it. When we say parents, we need your help. And children, all this stuff is if we create something to help. How many of y'all want committed, responsible children? So if we do that and they're like, hey, mom, I'm supposed to be a prayer partner on Sunday. And you don't, you look, if you're not going to come, drop them off. Go to Subway. Do something. But drop them off. If not, how are we going to help you? We're committed. The question is, are you? Then we have a prison team. Come on. Let me see. Look at this wonderful thing. February 24th. Come on. Set the, everybody say, set the captives free. This, this is what I love, y'all. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Why? Because we're not just, listen, it's just the pawn sufficient, but we're in, we're in setting the captives free around the planet, even out here. But that, that's good. That's where you get to raise up fathers. That's where you, you get to people, you just get to raise and disciple. I think Jesus would have been all up in there. And we're doing that out here. And let me tell you what we've done in the Pando app because of you guys. So far, I looked yesterday, and we've reached 1,637,710 people in seven months. In seven months, y'all. Ruthie was like, I can't wait for a year. I'm like, girl, we're already, we already at 1,600,000. Seven months. 971 people accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You guys all watched this on Pando? Or did you meet us when we went in there? Only one. All right, stand up real quick. So now you got visible manifestation. Thank you. And you can't, you just think about it. And I'm not saying this is them, but, you know, because, well, I could sit there with y'all, but. Like, what's better, to bring more light into a lighted room or to get people who were lost and was actually causing damage and then getting them out and making them successful in, in life? 
Mm -hmm. We're going to have one days for men, women, singles, singles. We're going to have one days for y'all. We heard you. <laughs> plus, plus we see too. Where are my single people at? <laughs> one year, one year, one year, one year, one year. Because I love you. Because I love you. Ladies, you heard. He come up to you and all of a sudden you're like, pastor said a year. Pastor said a year. Chill, chill, chill. Pastor said a year. I mean, you cute and all, but of one year. One year. One year. <laughs> I, I say that to everybody. It's hard to focus when you first get out and everything on everything when you're, you're already sharing your feelings. Like, it's hard. It's not just for people that there. Like, people get out of a relationship and you out here. You're still locked up. That's how you wound up in six relationships. I just wanted to throw this or something. I just felt like that was the moment. Where are my business people at? Close business. This is what we're going to start doing. We are launching. Uh, mark your calendars. March 9th. March 9th. We are launching quarterly get rap business. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be teaching business. We're going to have David Vestal on the first one. We might bring Tom Lane. We'll have different people. I used to do that on the side as well. So I might be teaching some John Maxwell courses from uh, stuff like that. The goal is to get all the businesses to thrive in the kingdom. And look, free so if you own a business, right, this is where you want to be, March 9th. Uh, we're going to adopt apartment complexes. Instead of doing the big, and we'll explain more of that uh, in the lab, but the goal is to have missionaries around the, the I was going to say around the planet, maybe, but around <laughs> Houston, right? We're going to adopt apartment complexes. We're going to do mini love fest to, like, tighten our community around us. I think in uh, Crazy Generosity, when we're doing the big miracle offering, we're going to have stuff, items out there, maybe like diapers, shoes, all that, absolutely free for whoever needs it the whole entire month. Why? So they can say, that's crazy. No, that's Come on, we need land. I believe we're, we're going to have land. I believe we're going to have land. We need land. I've been looking for five, ten acres. I've been looking for land for two things. I want to create Love City, right? That's where we have a real giant, that's crazy, no, that's God, right? The whole planet sees it like, man, that's how they got it. They were, there were like some crazy people that were crazy enough to believe that the word of God was true. And, and this is what I want. It's not like church. I want to build a community, right? Maybe there's some people who have believed in restaurants. I don't know salons right there's there's this community where everybody's hanging out throughout the week and then we also do church on sunday over there not the other way around because usually we plant and we're like let's go reach the community now i want to be up in the community and then we're like oh yeah you want to come to church we, our church is right there so i want land for love city but i also want land for this dream with me boom so We've seen this somewhere, not this, but we just seen it, and we were looking at buying it, and we thought, man, this would be good. So if we get some land, not uh, in front of, like, the prostitution place or in front of the drugs, the kind of halfway houses are, we, we would get this, and there'd be, like, a person that runs this place right here. And in this place, there's a couple rooms with just basically classes, and they sleep there, and we, do, we, we work on intentionality. Maybe it's five at a time. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that starts. But we started off where we're strengthening these men. They come out, they go there, right? They're serving. Maybe they're working around. We have some business owners that will give them some opportunities. And then what happens is that over here in this property, we're building quadruplexes or we're building apartments where they could actually move there and they have to pay rent and be a successful member in community. <laughs> Instead of them not being able, now we've, we're sharing that we believe in them. Maybe we have car, pro we've given like 15 cars that get wrapped. But once we create a system, now we're changing stuff. Now people got jobs. They could go, oh, no, we're going to rent an apartment there. I, I started thinking it's crazy. Let me, you want me to give you, like, way out there? Yeah. Let me give you way out there. I'm going to give you way out there. So, boom, we have them in apartments. Now, all of a sudden, we start designing houses because maybe they haven't built their credit and stuff, and now they can move. Instead of from the apartment, they can move and actually purchase a home that could be theirs on, like, a rent-to-own type thing, and we will do that for them. So now we're talking about economy changing, belief changing, people that believe in God changing, but we need to do that. 
we collectively together, we have to be a part of this miracle because it matters. And a matter of fact, I want to thank, 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 I want to thank every single person that tithes, that believes in the vision. Every single person. This is why you got finances. It's to build the kingdom. Every person that tithes, every person that does an offering. This is what we're doing, y'all. I told some guy outside, it was a new guy, some professional athlete that I know sent another athlete. And so he was there and he was like, man, this is cool. And I was like, you know, I, I didn't, I, I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be a pastor and I'm going to like, none of the thoughts, like, I'm going to be famous. I already did that when I sold drugs. I was a baller. So why would I, I, I didn't even want to, like, and, I, I'm, you know, I'm careful with that stuff. I want to see something happen. I want to see a movement. I want to see fathers actually fathering in, in our community. Husbands being husbands. And we need every single person to do that. Every single person is important. Or we will never send it in the right, mo the right momentum, right? Like you saw in Hosea how everything was falling apart. You saw when we talked about the revival in chapters 1 and 2, forgot the book. Uh, Zechariah, I believe. But when we shared about the revival one, it was that these people stopped listening too. They weren't doing what God wanted to do. All throughout the Bible, that's all you see, the common thread. Will we have some people that will change things around? We can't complain about something that we ourselves are not committed to. We want to see change. It starts at home. When you get it at home, you bring it to the church, and then you're doing it here. And then when you're doing it here, you, you, know, you can't be different. You're in here like, holy, then you get to work and you're unholy. <laughs> no, nah, that's not how we do it. You don't have to shove it down the throat, but be you. That's how we bring change. That's how we, we turn the thing. Everyone on your feet. <coughs> Hallelujah. Come on, if you haven't got baptized, people are getting baptized today. <laughs> and I ain't got my shorts. There's a dollar store down the street. We might have some in the back. Or oh, jump in jeans. Ooh, that rhyme. Jump in jeans. Jump in jeans baptism. <laughs> Amen. This is exciting. I'm excited. I am. I'm excited. In case, just in case, we're gonna help you. All the brothers here. Where are all my brothers at? That you know, get rap brothers. That you know, where you at? Where you at? Yeah. Where you at? Where you at? All right. Look, we're all gonna help you. That means when we, when we all know one. They, look, come on, come, come here, come here. Today, this is your day, my friend. This is your day. What's your name? Oh, you're in trouble now. <laughs> We're going to help you. One year. <laughs> One year. That's, you, you'll thank me later. Be the best advice you ever heard in your life. I did it myself. What I'm telling you. One time, and everything worked. Before that, I didn't do that. And nothing worked. I wound up in the same scenario. That'll throw you off. I'm telling you how it is. Truth. Everybody say truth. truth. See, they all agree. <laughs> Just one year. It's going to pass by anyway. But you're going to be strong. Your eyes are going to see different. He's like, man, I don't know if I like this or not. <laughs> Just trust me. I haven't got locked up in 15 years. <laughs> might know something. Might, might, maybe I know a little bit, a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe just, just at least not how not to get locked up. If there's one thing I know is how not to. <laughs> Even for y'all out here, I know how to not to. Uh, let us close our eyes and say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. What are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? Mm -hmm. What are you saying to me?
Heavenly Father, I pray for those that are here that maybe in their hearts right now you're speaking to them. Maybe they don't have a relationship with you. May they make a decision in their heart today. Maybe they heard a lot of things today that um, you knew God was talking to you. You just want to connect with community. Or maybe now you could see that if you are not seeing the revelation from the word, that's why your life is wild. God is calling somebody in Jesus' name. Let's make a joyful noise if you received that word this morning. I think it's incredible because each and every single one of us 